Hey guys, welcome to episode 54 of Lady K Sailing. Today we're going to talk about how to get your boat from Florida to the Bahamas. We're going to cover the Gulf Stream, the wind, staging in Florida and landing in the Bahamas, customs and immigration, shopping and fuel, and what stuff you can expect to be doing when you finally get here. The first thing we need to talk about is, of course, the Gulf Stream. You're going to need to be crossing the Gulf Stream. It is going to heavily impact how you get from Florida to the Bahamas. So we're just going to get that out of the way right now. Looking at this picture here, you can see this is Florida on the left, and you have some Bohemian Islands over on the right. Pretty straightforward, except we have to cross the Gulf Stream to get from Florida to the Bahamas. Now you can see the Gulf Stream, and this is sort of a heat map, so the red area is the very, very strong current, and you can see by the arrows that it flows to the north. This is an extremely important thing to remember. It's a very powerful stream of current, three or four knots in some places. It doesn't take up the whole crossing, but it is a big part of it. Sometimes it's only a few miles off the coast of Florida. Sometimes it's 10 miles off the coast of Florida. You can actually check online before you leave to see how far out it is. But most importantly, you have to get across it and it is going to push you north very aggressively. Now with that in mind, when we do cross the Gulf Stream, we have to look at weather. Now this is a shot of WindFinder. We use WindFinder and predict wind and windy and all sorts of different things, but WindFinder is the easiest one to talk about on camera. So what we're looking at right now is the coast of Florida and then over to the Bahamas. You got Bimini down here and you got Freeport and the Grand Bahama Island at the top. Now, when you're crossing the Gulf Stream in the middle here, it's extremely important to consider how the wind is going to impact the Gulf Stream. You have a three or four knot current going to the north and in this particular day, you have a 10 or so knot wind going to the south. Now they are going to fight each other and they're gonna fight each other horrendously. The northern current and the southern wind will actually create five or six foot white caps out on the Gulf Stream and it'll be like a washing machine. This particular day we're looking at is not a day that you want to be crossing from Miami to the Bahamas. What you're looking for is a day that actually has no northerly component to the wind at all a southerly, a southwest, a southeast, any of that is fine, and you need two of those days. The first day, you want a gentle wind from the south or southwest or southeast um, so that the Gulf Stream can calm down. If there's been a big northerly, it's going to be chewed up, so give it one full day of sort of gentle southerly winds to calm down. On day two of those gentle southerly winds, that's when you make your crossing. That way the Gulf Stream is calm, it's got in itself nice and collected, it's not all choppy, and you're not going to have a heck of a ride. So two days, no northerly component to the wind. Go on day two. We crossed with a south-southwest wind at about 10 to 15 knots after giving it a whole day with no northerly to calm down, and we had a great time, no problems. It was a bit rolly, but I mean, it's the Gulf Stream. Once you've figured out the Gulf Stream and the weather, you'll be able to plan your window. But the next big question is, which route do we take? There's sort of two schools of thought on that, and we chose the route that we wanted to take based on the safest and easiest way, and also the shortest way that would make a little bit of use of the Gulf Stream. Let me show you what I mean. We're gonna jump over to the iPad right now. And of course, look at Navionics. If you wanna see a video on how to use Navionics, click up in the corner right now to check out our video on that. Okay, so here we are in Navionics. And the first school of thought is to start from a northern place in Florida, Fort Pierce, West Palm Beach, that kind of thing. And when you're leaving from there, you're probably gonna go over here to the Grand Bahama Island on this side and typically Freeport. That's a good place to check in. It's got lots of amenities, all that stuff's there. And if you look at our actual numbers here, it's 74 miles from the West Palm outlet to Freeport. There might be a little anchorage a little bit closer on the Freeport side, but generally you're going to Freeport to check in or something like that. And this is a pretty good way to do things. It saves you from having to go down the Florida coast more toward Miami or Fort Lauderdale and it's nice and easy straight shot across. But it is 74 miles and there is a shorter way. The other thing that we don't really like about this is you notice it isn't straight across to the east. It actually goes to the south a little bit. There's directly east and you'd have to go a little bit south. Now you have this roaring Gulf Stream coming up the middle and it's gonna be pushing you to the north. So you're actually fighting the Gulf Stream a little bit if you choose to go this route. It's fine if you have a fast enough boat or if you don't care about fighting the Gulf Stream, it's all good. 
The other thing to consider here is if you're leaving from somewhere like West Palm Beach, the outlet into the ocean tends to not have any really great anchorages around it for you to stage and wait for that good weather window. And if you do choose to leave in the dark, which we did, leave at five o'clock in the morning just before sunrise, you buy yourself more hours of daylight. This outlet right here is quite busy. It has a lot of shipping and uh, fishing traffic going in and out of it. And I don't know if I'd wanna do all this navigation at night. So that's why we chose not to leave from West Palm or anywhere like that. Okay, so that's the northerly option. We actually chose to go with the southerly option and bring the boat all the way down here to Miami and cross directly over to Bimini. Now the first thing you'll notice here is this is less than 50 miles, which is much better than the 70 some odd miles of the northerly route. Shorter tends to be safer which is also faster. So it was all the right things for us. The other great thing about this is you'll notice it doesn't have a little southerly tilt to it. It actually has a little bit of a northerly tilt to it. So that Gulf Stream ripping up in the middle here will actually push us up north and we can actually just head due east and hit Bimini with the help of the Gulf Stream. So you're not fighting the Gulf Stream and we're actually gonna talk about that in a second. The other great thing about leaving from Miami is you have No Name Harbor right here. Now, No Name Harbor is a little hurricane hole, completely protected on all angles, a great place to hang out while you're waiting for that perfect weather window. And if you choose to leave at night like we did, you can come right out this ocean inlet and there's no traffic, there's nothing to run into, it's very easy to navigate it in the dark. Okay, now we're gonna talk about our route. Remember that really nasty Gulf Stream that's gonna be pushing you north? We're actually gonna make some plan changes to our route instead of going straight from Miami to Bimini. We're gonna make use of the Gulf Stream and we're actually gonna do that faster than flat out just pointing east and going. So let's get started. We're gonna come out of No Name Harbor, which we know is here, out through the inlet, and let's start our route about here, outside the inlet, nice and safe and far from everything. Now we could beeline it straight across to Bimini, but we're not going to. What we're actually gonna do is we're gonna go south to about here and that's usually about where the Gulf Stream starts. You'll notice when it starts because you'll be doing hull speed, six knots or what have you, until you get to the Gulf Stream and then all of a sudden you'll be doing three knots or three and a half knots. Then you know you're in the Gulf Stream. So once we get into the Gulf Stream, what we're actually going to do is we're going to turn north and we're going to ride that Gulf Stream up to the north and we went from six knots to eight or eight and a half knots for this whole stretch because the Gulf Stream was sort of at our back very 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 fast you're a rocket ship across this part and when it starts to slow down you know that you're over here at the other end of the gulf stream and it's no longer pushing you so you turn the bow a little bit south and you go straight into the bimini harbor without any influence from the gulf stream anymore so you're actually making really good use of it i've actually exaggerated these points a little bit just to make my point but you'll head a little bit south rocket ship to the north and then a little bit south right into bimini so you're making use of the Gulf Stream, you're in the Gulf Stream for less time because you're doing much more speed and you're running with it instead of against it. Now, we picked our course, we staged, we waited for that perfect weather window and we've made our crossing. If you wanna watch us make the crossing, click right here to watch that episode. Um, it's pretty good, we do exactly what I just described and right into Bimini. But our next topic is what to do when you get to Bimini. You gotta clear customs. You got a whole bunch of stuff you have to consider. So here is the South Bimini and North Bimini Islands. And the harbor you're going to enter is right here. Now, in our last episode, you saw us coming around this red marker here. You keep it to starboard, but it really doesn't matter. These charts are so accurate on Navionics right now that you just stay in the deep water and you'll be fine. It's important to note that this green marker is not there anymore but it doesn't really matter. You're all in 10 or 12 feet of water the whole time. We're gonna go up the channel and into the Bimini Harbor. This is a very well protected harbor. You're not gonna get a lot of wind or waves or anything in here. Pretty sweet place to be. There's a bunch of marinas on your left as you enter and we're gonna talk about those in a minute but I wanna cover anchorages first. After the big game club, which is this marina here, there's actually an anchorage right on the left. Now it is downwind from the diesel power plant, which is here. So you are gonna get diesel smoke coming toward your boat whenever the trade winds are blowing from the north or east, which they usually are. It's also very shallow in here and it gets very poor reviews. The only other anchorage in this harbor is up at the north end of the harbor, a long way from the city, a long way from everything. But in here, you can see this big man-made harbor. These rock walls are actually stone, they're man-made, 
There are no waves in this harbor. It's 15 feet deep. It's a really great place to be if you got to ride out a blow. You'll need a hard bottom fast dinghy if you want to get all the way back to town, but it is kind of what it is. The next thing I want to talk about are the marinas and let you know why you should stay in a marina instead of anchoring. And I want to tell you about one marina specifically, the Bimini Blue Water Marina. So we're going to shoot back here and you can see we're actually here right now at the Bimini Blue Water Marina. Here's our boat sitting in a slip. So we actually have first-hand knowledge and we'll be able to give you a tour of the marina right when we're done talking now. But this is why we stay at Bimini Blue Water. They have two docks, they have lots and lots of depth, lots and lots of slips, they can accommodate catamarans and things like that. They've got RO water, they've got a grocery store nearby, Customs is down the street, everything is within walking distance, all for just a buck a foot. So this marina is actually a steal considering where you are. A buck a foot is amazing. The first thing you'll notice when you step off your boat onto the dock at Bimini Blue Water Marina are the excellent docks. Everything's very well taken care of. The pilings are all new. They have rubber guards on the boat side of the piling. The cleats are all very new, very well fastened, and very secure. Next, you'll find relatively new power pedestals with proper breakers, 50 amp and 30 amp plugs, and even metered water right at the dock. Of course, the most important part is the gin clear blue water. You can actually see the shadow of your boat cast across the sand at the bottom. The only downside, you'll be able to tell how dirty the bottom paint actually is. Walking down the main dock past the office, you'll come to the on-site fuel pump. This is diesel and gasoline, and right now it's about $4.80 a gallon for diesel. In the middle, we've got some bathrooms and showers and the main office where you will go to check in. They will actually give you customs documents that you can fill out and bring to customs with you so that you're one step ahead of the game. And they rent golf carts for 20 bucks. Pretty sweet. Next stop is the freshwater pool, which is just amazing on these super hot days. And the next building over is the last building in the entire complex, and that is the good showers. So if you stay here, go to this one and use the back right corner shower. It is the best. The last stop on marina property is the RO water treatment plant. These guys actually turn salt seawater into fresh drinking water with a reverse osmosis system. 25 cents a gallon and you can walk your jerry cans right over here and fill them up. You leave the gated marina with 24 hour security, you'll be turning right for the first time and you'll be headed for the customs office which is just a few minutes walk up the road. Here you'll find the closest grocery store to the Blue Water Marina, an easy two minute walk. Not very well stocked but it does have the bare essentials. And we arrive next door at the Big Game Club. This is a major marina facility. And the first door on the left is actually the customs office. This is where you're gonna go and pay $300 to let your boat be in the Bahamas for a year. They're gonna ask you if you have any guns or anything like that, and then you'll be on your way. It takes about an hour to get in and out. When you 
leave the customs office and the big game club, you'll turn right and walk up the road another minute and look to your left for the big pink police and administration building where you have the actual immigration office to check yourself and whoever else is on your boat into the country. If we turn left out of the marina, we're on to one of the best traditions with staying at Bimini Blue Water Marina and the thing you'll probably remember the most. Make sure you stop and grab a couple of cold calyx on the way. It'll save you a couple bucks in a few minutes. So that's left out of the marina, grab a couple calyx and turn right at the first street and walk up the hill for the most breathtaking thing you'll see while you're in Bimini. Make sure you stop here at CJ's for lunch. Some conch fritters and fries, excellent stuff. And then you can actually walk down and eat it on one of the most beautiful beaches in the world. Hey guys, so that's it from us for episode 54. Um, we are in Bimini right now. We're headed back to Florida to restock, resupply, refit, and repair. Um, just wanted to let you guys know, uh, hit subscribe, hit the like button. That helps our videos show up more on YouTube, and it sort of helps motivate us to keep going with the videos. Um, also, Lady K Sailing is completely brought to you by Patreons that are a part of our... They wanted to be in the video. Anyway, Patreons that are part of our Team K. If you go to ladykaysailing.com forward slash team dash K. Uh, you can see what that's all about. That helps us keep going and, you know, keeps the diesel in the tank and the beer in the fridge. Um, that said, there's a thank you shout out, and here's Candace. Thank you so much to our newest patron, Rob. This one's for you. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> we'll see you guys in a week for uh, episode 55. Holy moly, we should be in Miami by then. Ciao. Bye, guys.